it's the Jobbers Tears Podcast. Good evening, Jobber Nation, and welcome to another episode of the Jobber Tears Podcast. As always, I am Janelle from HR. Here with Sir Wilkins and Mr. Black and Leo in the background. Um, as we Turn are about who? Okay. Joke, 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 joke. JK, JK. As we are about under once again, uh, we're about 28 days away from WrestleMania. As you don't know, it is here in New York, New Jersey at MetLife. Stadium um, Sunday, April the 7th. Um, but we are doing some major events leading up to WrestleMania Day. Um, starting off with our brunch and games um, hosted by no other than LAX on Saturday, March 30th as a kickoff. Um, and then we have Battle Club Pros, Icon 3 show, all female wrestling show during WrestleMania week. Um, Wednesday night in Brooklyn, and then we have our NXT Takeover viewing party um, the Friday, April the fifth, and then oh, we are Saturday is um, Hog. Do you want to talk about HOG? I think it's Culture Clash. That's culture what I think it Clash is. Culture Clash, it is with the Great Buddha. Um, so a lot of like really, I don't want to say old fans, but a lot of like older wrestling fans are really excited about the Great Buddha um, doing a meet and greet at House of Glory on the Saturday um, afternoon, April the sixth. Cheap plug. And then uh, we are going to end off with WrestleMania itself. WrestleMania 35 hosted by no other than Al Snow. And a special guest. Didn't mean to cut you off. We got another special guest coming down for WrestleMania. Stay tuned. We just keep pulling tricks out of our bags there, everybody. Um, How has everyone's week so far? Cool. What's going on? Pretty quiet. Sure. Okay. Sir, how are you enjoying unemployment over here? You know, one week solid, ain't got no job. Shit is lit. We are definitely Shit is different. not naming any of the titles Unemployment Wilkins. Okay, just keep that in mind. Should, should I put my new name instead of Sir Wilkins, Unemployment Wilkins? No, that's really classless. Unemployment Wilkins? That's old Why is that classless? First of all, that's, first of all, that's Matt Long. That's Matt Syllables. <laughs> okay. Unemployment. You E. Wilkins? What? You eat Wilkins. First of all, it sounds like you eat Wilkins. I was like, um, <laughs> no, no, no. Does that sound terrible? Nah, I'm just saying this other point in my life is different. Like, I wake up at eight in the morning. You know, I go to the gym from like eight to like twelve. That's a, that's a bad hour. Yeah, I get like an hour cardio session to get my work and get my weights in. I'm eating different. My skin looking different though. I got no job. <laughs> I'm pretty sure your skin looks the same. Nah, nah, it's, it's, it's getting extra luscious. Oh, <laughs> extra delicious. Okay. And then the people during the middle of the day are different. They're How's nicer. That? I told y'all I got on the van. The lady told me, "God bless you," but then she said, "Jesus is coming." Oh, so she just flipped it. <laughs> All together. Which kind of scared me because I'm really like conspiracy theory, mm-hmm. very religious type of dude. When she said, she's like, all the signs are there. Shit God happened. bless you. And I was like, oh. Oh, and then I moved over. Somebody was like, thank you. Have a good day, sir. Another lady said hi to me. And then the mailman came. You know life is different. When you receive the mail. When you receive the mail in your hand. hand. That's when you know you ain't working. <laughs> you, you, you see the mailman. I got a new bed. I ain't got no job. I got a new bed. I got, I got a little bit of money saved up. Okay. So you got I bought some new cushions to sleep on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a brand new bed. This new futon shit. You know, I ain't got no job. So, bro, unemployment niggas sleep on futons. <laughs> You're annoying. <laughs> um, before we do start, <laughs> behind Gorilla's position, I do want to thank... Oh, You have a question, Leo? Yeah. Oh, all right. So, you know, my train ride was sad. Like I, I, I sat in the second car. And like is that the quiet car? Because I know Metro North niggas is different. Tra- no, 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 I took no, no, I took the bad car. I took the bad tra- the four train, two train. Uh, what? So you said two nigga, you took the MTA. Nigga, everybody took the MTA. I'm sorry, a Metro North ass nigga. Relax, <laughs> relax. I mean, when I can afford the Metro North, I take like the, the half of the train. Okay, go ahead. And then like these two couples got on the train. Like, wait, did you just admit? Do you have the dream? Yeah. Okay, continue. Oh, we've all done it. No, I've never done that. 
Three stick thighs is not definitely hopping over no type. You, you never, you never went in with somebody and did a, a little get together with somebody. No. Oh, so you always paid. Yeah. You never went through the door. Somebody opened the door. Yo, the door opened. Nah, nah, the door. <laughs> and you slipped through the door. Yo, because so at my train stop, yo, the so there's a back and there's a front. I, I live closer to the back on the downtown side. That shit said no entry. Like it had a red thing on it. You couldn't even swipe. Like. What the fuck? Like, so literally everyone had to get, had to walk back out, walk all the way two more blocks to get through the turnstile. Like, I done missed the train twice. Like, what MTA? You got to do better. But continue your story. So no, I don't hop the train. I walk, if anything, I walk through the door. They were like, like these two people came on the train all drugged up and everything. Then, like, they just sat down right by me. And then, like, I you felt that home. <laughs> oh, like, I didn't feel scared of anything. Like, just felt all like, like oh, yeah, it's enough. <laughs> They walked through the You door. felt regular. They, they walked through those door things. Yeah. So then, like, after they sat down, they started talking. The guy takes out his drugs, and he's like, cracks it up and everything. And then she takes out a dollar. Wait, do- like, actual out- rocks? Yeah. So they take out, like, a, a dollar and everything. She takes out, a, like, money. So you just saw crackheads. She, she holds it up. And then... Shooting up. Yeah. And then he, he he's like, come up here, baby. Put your... Put, put your money under the stuff and put your stuff on top of your money and come over here. The you are here. way too close to hear this entire conversation. <laughs> By the way, like, it just sounded like you was hella close, like... Because, like, I'm, I, I didn't feel scared. Like, I was cool. It's not about feeling scared, but it's just, like, mind your damn business. You know? They're doing drugs, they're doing drugs. They're doing drugs. Like, they own the thing. And we go, we go from Harlem into 96th Street, and they bump into each other, like, you know when, when it swerves? Yeah. So they, he's like, baby, catch it. And then, <laughs> and then he has a catcher, he has a holder, and then he's like, oh, baby, you missed this film. And, and I'm just like, damn. And then we have 96th Street now, and then they oh, the doors open and close. Mad white people come on. I'm like, they're not going to keep doing this shit now. <laughs> And then from yes, like 60 are. to 77, they continued. I'm like, damn. The shit I mean, crack. Like, I just learned a lesson here, and that's if you're going to do drugs, just do that shit wherever. That was, <laughs> wait a minute. Yo, the wild that was the lesson you learned was like, fuck it. Do wherever yeah. you want to do it. Do like, in life, just do whatever you want to do. Just in life, do whatever you want to do. If they going to do they drugs like that, just do whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to no, do. No, that's not the lesson. Yeah, you until do. like the cops roll in into 72nd Street and arrest them niggas. It depends what it is. I passed Times Square, they were still doing it. I got up at Times Square, they were still doing it. Listen, it depends what it is. If it's crack, they're going to jail for a long time. Yeah, and coke. Cool. No, 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 no. Coke, you don't get with jail for a long nah, time. I don't think coke you. Yeah. Don't go to jail for a long time. Yo, did you hear about this bribery shit for college admissions? Like, these two actresses got arrested. I should, that's, that they deserve that shit. I, I'm with it. And Charlamagne the guy had made them donkey of the day, and I thought it was the funniest thing because, like, when, when I look back, like, the whole college process, it was just, like... Really, if you couldn't afford that shit, it was either take Did out you do a an interview for, for St. John's. Mm-mm. St. John's was my safety school. To actually be honest, like it was like the last, it was the bottom of the barrel. What was the number one school? Georgia State. Georgia State. And I got in. Why didn't you go? And so I didn't go because my mom was on some like well, she's smart. You smart. don't know. But nigga, you, you what kind of grade you had in <laughs> high, high school, B? I mean, I took AP Chem and all that type of shit. But regardless, whoa, whoa, whoa. time out, time out. Oh. What was the SAT score? I don't remember. It definitely was like 14 something. Oh. 1400? No, 14 something. Yeah. And I took the ACT because I wanted to go. I was like, I got to I got to leave New York. I got to open up this bitch. So ACTs are good. She yeah, they're good in the South too? and in the Midwest states. So they they're more predominantly than the SAT. So I took ACTs test too. She one of those nerd chicks that were twerking yeah. and also doing chem homework at, at night. And in like mad clubs after which, school and which type shit. Did you get? All of them. You want to know the funny story? Guess what? Guess what? Look at this one. Guess what subject was my highest regent score? What? Spanish? Spanish. Of course it was. My my nigga, your last name is Garcia. Yo, I was so pissy because it was one of those I tried to fail. And I walked out that shit. Yo, when I got my results, they were like, yo, you got like a 93. What the fuck? I mean, Mind you, it was a written and a verbal portion to that shit. And I passed both. And I was just like, What? And then, but reasons I took, I took AP Chem, I took physics, I took um, math, A and math B, 
I tell you. No wonder mad niggas being her DMs, bitch. No wonder, son. No, bro. Because she can cook. She ain't but, ugly. She's and she's smart. Let's look at this nigga. That's right. But no, Georgia State, yes. I wanted to go, but my mom, I never visited the school. I just wanted to go because I was like, oh, Atlanta, you know. You know Because you're going to be a thought, my nigga. Probably. You're going to be a thought. So my Keep mom going. was like, well, you've never been to Atlanta. You don't know nobody. Like, I don't think that's a good idea. So, she, so we made an agreement. I was like, well, I'll stay in New York. If I dorm, like that was the only thing I was like, smart, if smart. I'm gonna get, if I'm gonna stay in New York, I'm gonna get the college experience. So I dormed. So you McDotty McDotty in New York. Okay. That was yeah, at home. Like I was cool okay, with it. Okay, I was okay, like, okay, all right. Okay, okay. But I actually, was it half my college experience? I was single, and the other half I wasn't. So it really. I didn't take college seriously at all, son. It really wasn't like I was out here thought and bombing because like you a better person. Than literally you, half of the time I was in a I'm, relationship. I'm hoping to graduate college, son. Took like a solid ten years, B. What? Shit happens. <laughs> like I went, so, so. It's okay. College is not for everybody. I dropped out after like the second so I dropped like the, the next year. College not for me. It's not. It's not for everybody. Really he's smarter than me, so he's like, this shit ain't working, B. I'm out. No, like <laughs> I always use the great example, like look at Diddy. Diddy start. he went to Howard, but he ain't finished Howard. Like, you got mogul millionaires Man, listen, that ain't never been to high college. School, stuff like that, I barely passed out. I literally, like, <clears throat> my first one in there, literally. I went to school throughout sophomore, senior, and junior year. Senior year, I just didn't want to go to school no more. And they still passed me, but it was just like, yo, listen, <laughs> like, I know, like, I'm, like I'm, I wanted to drop out because I wanted to work full time. That ended up work, not working out. I did YBCB B program out of school at night. Wait, Young Men Cashman? <laughs> YBC. Okay. It was lit because. It sounded like it. I was like, it was lit YMCA because I went to school four what? days a week. I was off Fridays. I went to school from four to ten. Yeah. And like how that that program too? Yeah. And like And how come he benefited more than I benefited too. How? I benefited way more than him. How? But how? Because I, I said that I was able to like act and I was supposed to leave and then Okay, but but like how that you never asked me what job. happened. You never asked me what too. happened. We were in there. I went to the nursing homes. <laughs> I you still don't. You like me, nigga. <laughs> well, you ain't got no job. Well, listen. Stop well, frightening on well, it. Stop frightening on our listeners. You don't have a job, Leo. Nigga, keep that same energy. Go ahead. I mean, listen. YBC program and Mad stuff. I went to trips. Yeah, we did trips. We did Mad trips like school. Like yo, yo, like you get credits like one class where you get like three credits. Yeah. Like it yo, like and it was just like it was less of the BS, and the girls was kind of more with it. Like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> Yo, you just told our whole listeners, Yo, fuck school. Let's go to this YMB program. Yo, listen, I'm get, get lit. Now, all of a sudden, yo, the whole school system is a whole damn scam. All right? Like, literally, like, they teaching a fish how to climb a tree. And expect that everyone else to do that every Ooh. other animal kingdom. Your school is a Talk damn to them, scam. King. Like, Talk to them, King. Like in the inter, in the, in the, especially in, 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 in like in the lower income community, they teaching people how to be workers. Compared to go out to Long Island, they teaching kids how to be thinkers. Teach That's why, kids. like, a, I mean, it depends. Like, there are more. I think the opportunities that you know, there are definitely more opportunities in the education. Um, field now for kids than it was for us. Like, I mean, for me, I mean, I always say I was blessed because the high school I went, like, it also depends, like, the school you go to. Like, I know how to drop a plane, The type though. of support, like. I know how to fly a plane. You, you know, know how to fly, fly a plane? I got taught that. I definitely would not get on. How do you know that? Because my school has had aviation. Yeah. Oh, so then, okay, that makes, I don't but that's little, what makes little, sense. Little, listen, listen. I know how to do a lot of stuff just to be in the school. I know how to make beats. On Fruit and Looms, like, I'm a monster at that. You said on what? Fruit and Looms. Like, I know how to make beats. Oh, it's not like you said Fruit Looms. But I just never pursue it. Like, they told me how to do beats. They told me how to make, like, I'm a beast at PowerPoint. I'm a beast at PowerPoint. No, I think school gives you that good foundation. But, but I just felt that me as more of a free thinker, college was more better for Yeah, me. no, higher ed is not, once again, but higher ed is not But then again, I just feel like how that, I most likely am smarter than the smartest kid because he's just better at memorizing stuff. Because if I ask him, like, everyone's a genius in their own right. They might be a football player, like um, Nick Falls. He's probably an idiot in, 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 in real life, but he's a but he's a football genius. So, well, I'm... Well, that's debatable. What? You know, I go out there and get it. Like, so, certain people are football geniuses. Drew Brees, that's a football genius right True. there. Yes, I Aaron agree. Rodgers, football genius. LeBron, that is a basketball genius. Certain people have certain smarts in certain areas. I just feel like school doesn't measure it properly. Because I know somebody who literally go out there and fix a car. I mean, I think but it's yet, a but yet, type of school. But, 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 yet, but yet, if I told them 
to read something. His reading level is at a fifth grade level, but I'm telling him like, yo, break this apart, put it back together. But that's oh, what I mean, it you. depends. He got a little blunt. He does get. It depends on the type of school. Just like like so for high school, I went to high school for law because I want at once upon a time wanted to be a lawyer. Yeah. So like if you sit here like a debate or anything like that or evidence or going through precedents or things like that. Of course I know how to do that because that's what I was taught. That's the education that I received. I think especially with college, it's super important. Like when you declare a major, it should be something that you ultimately see yourself being scam, good at. Though. I mean, it's a scam in a sense where I'm not everywhere, be- but most most countries, college is free. So and it's and, a scam. in an economical sense, the shit is a scam. But I don't think it's, I, I don't, once again... I don't think it's for everybody. I think those that pursue it, like, that's just how I grew up. Like, there was no, like, right. my brother's the same way. My brother's, like, he hates school. Like, we are complete opposites in that sense. Like, he's like, I don't like school. I don't know why I'm doing this. Where me, I was like, I always loved school. I always wanted to go. I mean, so, I always say this. I always will have a job because I'm so good with my hands. Like, literally, I'm good with my hands. All I do is just get the proper training. Like, if I would push come to shove, when everybody have these, all these tech homes, I could probably, be, all right, let me rewire this. Build it up to get it more effective energy because everybody gonna need a handy man. So all these nerds who say, "Oh yeah, I'm book smart, went to Harvard, this that a third, blah 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 blah," you probably don't know how to fix your car. I mean, true. Once again, third. everybody, like you said, everyone has what they're good at and what they're not good at. Um, before we, wait, what? So I'm gonna tell y'all niggas something. I'm in the middle of y'all right here. <laughs> I graduated college. College is great. Network skills is fired on me. On um, puzzles. How many jobs I've had, as we can see. <laughs> Nigga so, almost want to run his resume down. So, like, I can run through the resume real quick. I've done everything. School helped with that. School did help with that. And I, and I, and, huh? And school did help with that. And I did, I did for Nago a couple times. I, went, I, had a, I was pre med in, in high school. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to sit with the bitches. My friends were in pre-med, and they also said it was mad bitches in pre-med. Wow, that's just like in the old days when they told you to take home math. To take no, when they told you, like when women started being able to like go to college and mm-hmm. really, you know, do that. They used to tell women, like older women, they used to tell you know the incoming women, like you should major in business because that's where you would find a husband. No, nah, instead nah. of not being good at it, like they like so. Let's say so, like. There's a show on Amazon that I absolutely love, um, um, Being Mrs. Maisel. Yeah. And it's set in like the 1960s or 1970s, something like that. And basically what her mom did was she wanted, her thing was to go back to school. She might, she's an older lady, older Jewish lady. And oh, married, home mom, whatever, whatever. She went back to the school. She was an art major. So she went to the school and then she found like these group of girls, young, art majors. And she was just like... Well, tell me about your husband or tell me about your man. And they're all like, I'm here for school. Like, I want to learn. And she's like, uh, I don't know how that's going to work when I mean, you don't have a husband. You guys should major in something like business or like math or something. And they all literally went to the program director and was like, we want to drop art and go to the business school. So they all went back to her like, what are you telling these young girls? Like, what do you mean? Like, so I just find it funny that you were like... Nah, I wasn't trying to find my wife, though. I, try, I was trying to find bitches. I was trying to get some be around bitches. Because I wasn't getting that many bitches in high school. But, you know... Did you get bitches in high school? Hell no. For real? Yeah, I didn't get that many bitches in high school. Did you get bitches in high school? Yeah. I, I, I can tell you what. What high school you went to? Christopher Columbus. Columbus. You went to Columbus? I heard about that school. It was the same school as Coach Dude. But then, what's funny though, my, my high school crush was in my class. Two, both my high school crushes, Sherry Wong and Jessica DeRay. Sherry Wong clearly is no, she's Jamaican and Chinese. Oh, but then she ended up liking my friend, my friend Shane. How did I know that? So I'm gonna tell you the story Shane though. Cute? I don't judge men. I don't care. Nah, so Sugar Shane had, had had all the bitches in high school. Oh, he did. He got girls. Nah, nah. nah his name was Sugar Shane. That's what they called him. Still fuck with him now? Nah, I haven't spoke to him in years. Though he, he went to jail. To hear, to hear some Wait a shit. minute. So it was some wild stuff. But I'm going to tell you the story though before we start. He was a scamming before scamming was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He scamming was, actually still isn't cool, but okay. But no, like, he was. <laughs> before, before everybody did it. He was the father and father of scamming. Scamming was. <laughs> his father's father's fights. No, 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 him and the Nigerians in Rosedale. Yeah. Oh. 
David, one of them, one of them is David because David. Yo, but some of those niggas Dave. Oh well, like you draw uh, stitching on these niggas. Well, like how that well, it's related to the court system, whatever. And, like he got sent back to Africa. These niggas got he got deported. Yeah. On top of his scamming. Yeah, he got. But, but he looked like a king out there though. Yeah. But, but anyway, anyway, say fuck that, fuck that. Brad, so, cool. so, 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 I, I was, I, I was feeling Sherry Wong, B. Sherry Wong was fine as fuck, B. So I, I was like, yo, this is after high school, graduated high school. Everybody knew I liked him. So he's like, yo, I'm, I'm gonna put you on, my nigga. Let's do a three way, but you, you stay quiet on the phone as I talk to her, try to hook you up. Cause Shane had game though. So Shane talking to her, whatever, yo, what's, what's good with my man Wilkins? You know, Wilkins like you and shit. She's like, Wilkins is cool and all, but I really like you. I was, like, I was like, what? Mind you, I'm at his crib at this time. I'm on the other phone. Remember when you had the two uh, phones? Yo, I used to, yo, remember this back in the day you used to do three ways just with uh, niggas and you don't do that shit no more? Yeah. So, so I had her be quiet. So she still do that though. So Like I like that the iPhone's now you can group FaceTime. Like that shit is I don't dope. need to see you when I'm about to scam or the product girl really likes you. No, 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 not that. But I'm just saying like the for I don't instance, like, big I, like, at my, the same like for instance, like my one of my best friends lives across the country and like we're both here. Like so when we want to talk, it's great. The that only time on FaceTime is on FaceTime and girls. Like I'm not FaceTime a group of niggas just talk about basketball. We can do that in person. And we're not gonna but what if you can't? No, nah, but then after Call me. I don't want to look she at shit. shit up, FaceTime he ended up scamming her. I got the story. Want to hear the story though, real quick before we start? How fast is it? It's pretty fast. Go. Okay, go for it. So she ended up getting a car accident and got mad bread. Mm. Oh. So, so then Sugar Sugar Shane was just like, "Yo, you try to get money off this shit for you, Wilkins, because you know get get my revenge for you." Pain and suffering. Because I know you liked her, so you know I'm gonna get get her back for you. Get her buy a couple pair of Pradas and shit. Prada's were popping. Pop. Prada's was definitely yeah. popping because my ex definitely was like Prada's. I had a pair of Prada's too. So. Come on, you know. And I know. definitely used to think that was just a Harlem thing, but it's not really. Me. Nah, 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 nah. I bought it off of Shane. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, nigga, so your nigga Shane was like Canal Street. Like, oh, oh, he was, B. He was. Got the, nigga, I was flying college, B. He had sneakers. He had jerseys. All oh, real. My, my nigga had my polo like, game. My polo game was fire with my two inches jeans buy, on. I used to buy jeans from him. I, mean, I used to buy um, jerseys from him. Yeah. You still have them? No. No. Why not? Why, Why you act like it was like the most obnoxious thing to still have? Like, so, that was like 15 years ago. So he, I guess no. he was dicking her down, right? And you know, she was in love with this dude because she, she, she thought he was like perfect. He, he kind of looked like um, Lloyd Banks mm. mixed with like Trey Songs. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's an odd yes. mix. It's, it's yes. a weird mix, but it worked for him. Because he yeah. was light skinned. He, he had a Lloyd Banks skin complexion. He had the light boys. He had a skin complexion. But he was kind of smooth. He was kind of smooth. He was like a light skin. He was a light skin Lloyd. Lloyd but yeah. Like swag track. Yes. Yeah. So he was like, he, 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 he's like, I'm going to get bread from her. I'm going to get bread from her. So, so, nah, nah, nah. So he, he, she started buying mad shit for him. So then he was like, yo, I'm, I'm going to try to drop her. I'm going to try to get at least another rack out of her. So, <laughs> this is wrong, but this is funny. So, it probably isn't. So he was like, "All right, cool." He got my an, another friend of ours to call her, like crying, like, "Yo, your sugar just got shot. They tried to rob him for the coke <laughs> because he, he used to tell people that he was a drug dealer. Mm. So he just got robbed for the coke. What? Yo, he needs your help." He needs about he needs about a thousand dollars to pay back the connect. Yo, can you help him out? Blah blah blah. So she, you know, she's scared that she 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 drives over to the nigga with her, her stick shift Jeep, Jeep Cherokee. <laughs> just, just drive over, you know, <clears throat> drives and picks him up, gets to the crib. So his mom was a nurse. So he wrapped a bunch of bandages. Yo, this nigga is doing the most. <laughs> and then put like ketchup underneath this shit. Y'all think I'm lying? This is the truth. This is the truth. This nigga is doing the most. So he puts it over there. He's just like, yo, yo, they got me. And she's crying. I heard because I thought he was lying, but then the other friend told me the truth. So like, yo, they got me, but I need the money. Why, first of all, why? She, she went to the bank now? easy and picked up a thousand dollars. Gave him my man. And then he's like, and then after a week later, he's like, I'm done with you. I don't want to be with you no more. Broke up with her. Sugar Shane ain't so sweet. Let's start the show. Actually, he is sweet. That's why you don't have sweets. It's well, fucking you know, he cavities and years. shit. And fucking decaying a whole mouth. That's your nigga? That's my son, though. Oh, 
Tell him to come to the party. Though. He probably won't recognize me. I probably will pass. You have to understand, a lot of people know don't recognize me no more. How? Your face is the same. People don't recognize me either. Your face is the same. Like I walked through the whole room and I was like, yo, preach? Is that you? Preach? Yeah, when I used to play ball, they called me Preach. Why? I never heard that. <laughs> nah, you didn't play ball with like, me. Yo, you didn't play, didn't play ball. My nigga, he didn't play ball. He never played ball. He was doing it. He played ball at the church. You see, now he's lying. He played ball with my dudes all the time. At the church, my nigga. At the church. My nigga, okay. I was in Brookville Park, like a young like a young legend out there. Okay, but I with wanna the know, mean jump shot. What the fuck is, where did he get that from? Because I have a, you know, loud voice. So it was like, Preach. Oh. <laughs> That's I funny. Like, I literally pass by people. Like, they think I'm my brother. How? It's either that or Urkel. They just call him, he's wearing glasses. Yeah, it's either, yeah no, they call me Preach or Urkel. And on, and on top of that, I, like, I lost a ton of weight and I have a beard. Like, literally, people walk right past me. Y'all baby pictures look the same. Nah, but I didn't have a beard. I the same. Like, I just got this baby face. Like, literally, like, literally, like yeah. how that some dude I used to go to school with, my son Kuto. So, um. <laughs> Who the fuck is that? Kuto! You don't know Kuto? Anyways, so my son Kuto. So um, I saw him at the store. I was like, "Yo, you know, you know me. Like, I'm actually respectful. I call him hoodlings by the government because I don't care." And what do they do? They don't care. He was like, "Yo, no one called me not in long time." I was like, uh, "Blocks." He's Haitian. He's not Haitian. That's me and Kuto. Kuto means knife and crayon. Mm-hmm. But my son is a thug. Though. I remember one time he fought some guy named um um. Well, they call him Croc. He looked like Croc from Batman. So oh, Croc. That's Croc. <laughs> that nigga definitely looks like Croc. So, so like, all, that just sounds like a Croc of shit. So thing. like how that, I'm walking That's down wild. and my son, they just call him Croc, literally try to hit him and then one clean, he had like a chin chin like Cameron and one clean swipe, he stabs him around. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. He was so swipe. good with the knife. What That's type what of they call him shit? Kuto. He went like, he said, who? <clears throat> <laughs> that he ran off. What type of magician shit is he on? Yo, the wildest shit I ever seen I'm at was when um like, this dude like, named Country. I remember Country. Remember Country? Remember Country. Is that his real name? Nah, this is what we just call him. So okay. Country, like this because girl. Because he's from the South? Yeah. yeah. So he, 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 he loved this girl, this Spanish chick. And then my man, John Smash. Oh, yeah, I remember her. And then, and then um he tried to fight my man, John. But then come to find out. She was the neighborhood thot because she just moved to the neighborhood, and she and just knew to the hood and a thot. And then she smashed the other the other hood nigga that, that lived there. Oh. And it was a huge battle royal with a park for her. Nigga yeah. said battle royal. Yeah, yeah. Good. So speaking of wrestling, it was the Crips and Bloods. Like there was like there's two different there's different sides. There's the stop one side, the town side, the back one side, and the NSN side. That's not two sides. That definitely. Well, this is the <laughs> side. This is Springfield. This nigga like said like five sides. That though, is an octagon. So, like, so basically. It was the front blocks versus the uh, stop one side. So it was basically the Chris and Blood beef, though. Yeah, they used to uh, fight. It was a battle royal yo, shit. Before we do start, I always, I always think it's funny. Um, so my high school it was at the block for Yankee Stadium. But as everyone that knows, like if you're from the Bronx, baseball? it's no, besides that, niggas before my school, niggas played baseball, niggas you know, played bowling, like they niggas Spanish. played wild. Well, played handball, right? No. That's actually the one thing they didn't play. Um, but the irony about it because I went to a little high school, they okay. had they made hookah there too. They had, they had hookah. Niggas in the car smoking hookah in the science class. I didn't know about hookah. Okay. I didn't know about hookah. Okay. That's okay. college. You didn't know about it, but they invented it. No, nah, them niggas did not invent. <laughs> the niggas did not invent hookah son. at all. Like but no, so the Eastern funny shit. part was no, not nice. funny, but the weird part like, is so if weird. you know one six one like that block, Grand Concourse is where the courthouse is. But yeah, they yeah, built yeah, a new yeah. courthouse actually behind my high school. But literally, Bronx Corrections is uh, it's on the same block as my high school. So, like, every day we would go to school and niggas from the bus would try to holler at everybody that walked past. Like, it was... You mean bookings? Yeah. Central bookings in the Bronx is dead ass across street from my high school. You, so, you went to a real hood ass high school, so. <laughs> I did, but I didn't. Like, it was really weird. Did Alicia go to high school with you? No, Alicia was in middle school with me. Like, we went to school in Harlem, which that was, that was hood hood. Because we was on one twenty, we was on one twenty second between seven. The life is not working. Oh yeah, Instagram, no Instagram, guys. Facebook, and everything's not working. Shut down. Well, they all—they all owned by Facebook. They are. They are. Yeah. Facebook, oh, Mark, Instagram, and oh, shit, WhatsApp. Mark is fucking up in the world. Anyway, all right. So let's move I mean, on to our I mean, opening segment. Since it's working. 
It says working, but like I don't know, like the live oh, is working. Who, who, who said it did that? Yeah, the live feed is not working. We can, you know, we can talk to the people later. Niggas is looking for us. They'll be all right. They'll be all right. So where you want to start? They can watch on the see. Yeah, like my upload on my Insta story is not working. Yeah, we're trying to upload, upload some videos all day. You know, we're trying to upload those artistic <laughs> videos. So let's go to our <laughs> OMG <laughs> moment of this week. What is that about? Wait, what's what, what about? Those, those videos you gotta be the moves. I be, be trying to set the vibes, B. I, I, I be discovering new art. You got candles now? You, huh? got, can, you got candles? You taking baths in the morning instead of showers? I can't. I can't. I can't I, I, you know, I'm taking an afternoon because I got a new job. Take, wait, take, take baths in the afternoon? Yeah, I got a new well, job. Well, after you shower. Because there's no one home, after B. Nobody <laughs> home. Also, you can be naked. There's no one home. This is the order of the bathroom. Where your mom at? She works. <laughs> she works. Oh, Everybody works. Nigga, I'm a real unemployment nigga. I live with my mother. <laughs> <In> my <basement. laughs> oh my boo. It's classic. Yeah, boo. Wait, wait, wait. So you need to take baths? At, my nigga, in the middle of the afternoon, I take a bath with some candles on. Weird. Turn off the light. <laughs> nigga, what if the house going to flames? Like, you need weird, to be considerate of niggas. It is like... weird. You'll think that how to use the money. One time I went to the bathroom to look at my beard. So you'll think that he will have the light open. He doesn't. So I walked in. He he not say nothing. Wait, he's in the tub, quiet no, as he's, fuck. He's in the bathroom. Don't say nothing. Take shit. I'm like, why is the light off? Like, oh. I, 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 I like to take shits naked, um, naked and um, with the lights in off. In the dark, yeah. I can understand that. But all right, let's go to um, behind gorilla's position for our OMG moment of this week. Goes to the farewell farewell tour of Kurt Angle. So those that we will talk about raw very shortly. But for those that um, do not know, Kurt Angle announced in his hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, this past Monday night on Raw that he will be retiring um, come WrestleMania. So his WrestleMania will be his last match, um, which I think is very interesting since, you know, once again, Kurt Angle came back in 2017. He entered the Hall of Fame um, and then returned as GM as Raw. And then, you know, that ended and then kind of been in and out here and there. Um, but on Raw, he said, you know, I'm 50. If I can't give you guys 36-year-old Kurt Angle, I really don't have no business being here. Mm. Which is commendable, but still like, oh shit, Kurt's really trying to hang up these boots. Yeah, Kurt um, is old. Kurt is, he ain't the only old nigga, so. But my question to you gentlemen, and you know, once again, he started his farewell tour. So he asked for his last match in his hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And it was no other than Apollo Crews, which I thought was very interesting. Um, that took the challenge, even though he lost. But uh, my question to you guys is, who do you think would end Kurt Angle's career? Who is going to be that last man to face the Olympic gold medalist? John Cena be. Kurt Angle. John Cena. Because he ended his career the last time. That and drugs. He, I, wow. Straight to the point. Okay, what about you, Mr. Black? Am I lying? I, um, I didn't say that, but I was just like, whoa. I have to say... I have to say some more jump. I think that had a, since they have so much great chemistry, him and like um this going back to TNA days, when it takes all match, they have different matches throughout the whole years. And who else knows him better than Joe? And now you have to put up a title up, you know, for the US championship, you know, a Simone versus an all American American. So. Jackson, I agree to do a little bit about Derry. I didn't realize that how that that was like kind of like an oxymoron. Like it didn't make sense to John Cena pointed out. He said, "You're already American, so I keep you all American, American." I was like, "It was a double negative." Yeah, I was like, "It was dumb." You got me again, Cena. <laughs> like you got no, me again. Like, like Cena probably had good grades like she did in high school. I'm just, he, he definitely did. Uh, he like, just yeah, I never skipped school. Like I never did any of that you shit. Never skipped school? Nah. Yeah, I didn't even school one one time. Really? I never skipped school. I didn't have no reason to. I like school. First of all, where the fuck was I going? Because I li- I went to school in the Bronx and I lived in Harlem. It was a park. If I come home, you have friends in the Bronx. Niggas is yeah. I mean, most of my like most of my friends live in the Bronx, but like, fuck is we doing? Like, you skip school, you go to you go to um, home and you leave, go to your friend's house. I hit the trick. It's a trick. It's a trick. And you got and I went to a small. Legacy? I went to a small school, so like my graduating class was like. 110 people. No, 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 no. That was mine, so I went to a small school, no, too. No, no, no. So, my school was huge. We had niggas manager. was like, you, first of all, everyone knew everybody. If your ass wasn't in school, somebody was asking where the fuck you was at. Mm-hmm. Nah, I didn't go to Iowa. But, all right, you say John Cena. You say Joe. I had a conversation with my homegirl this morning because, I, I like, the light bulb kind of went on, but it didn't come on. Um, I think Cena is, like, I feel like the Avi 
Yeah. But I he feel ended like his career. No. no, he didn't. No. Yes, he did. Okay. John Cena, no, oh, Kirk Angle went to ECW. He had one match against two, and then he didn't come back because you just the Dougie. More or less, John Cena, Cena more more or less it was Angle who kind of spotlighted John Cena, if you were going to say something. Spotlight, yes. He gave him the spotlight. He gave him that ruthless aggression promo shit. That was Kirk. Cool. Yeah, and that then was what happened cool. after? We will not talk about that, okay? John Cena get, made the come up. He, did he was out here, work life, thugonomics. <laughs> Yeah, in front of fucking Stephanie McMahon, that was hilarious. But no, I thought that because I feel like whoever Kurt goes against, you don't really need a storyline. It's just this is the person that I pick. I honestly thought it might be Taker, just because of the fact that. Come on, son, why not, are you doing this? But just because of the fact that it doesn't require a storyline. They're you know they know each other for many many years. No. Because I just feel like the obvious scene. No, just but I hate no, going man. Obvious. Tomorrow's going to be a trash match. But I was just like... Yeah, if, if, if anything, make Dolph do it. No. Yo, I read about... Speaking of Dolph, because I was like, where the fuck is Dolph Ziggler ass at? So Dolph, like, apparently has this weird handshake agreement with WWE nowadays where, like, they're allowing him to do other ventures, like, and not have to be on Raw all the time nowadays. So he could do more comedy stuff, but I had I was gonna put that actually on here, but no, I, was I like, saw that. I was reading I about know. that too. It's, it's legit a handshake, no, like legit, yo, like yo, hey, yo, B. You know, you still have a job. It's cool. See you when I see you. Because I definitely was sitting here like, do you fault him? The fuck is Dolph like, Ziggler? Like, do you fault like real talk? It is WWE for the why this character the way it is. It's definitely not all. Yes, it is. No, 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 like, no, 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 no. Dolph Ziggler has to take accountability for some so, of the okay. shit too. Okay. Okay. Okay, like, fine. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. I've never always been sold on the on the gimmick at all. So like, it definitely is not all. Like, his highest peak was when he beat Del Rio the night after WrestleMania. You got the cuss um, because of Jack Swagger. No, I think that when he when he cashed in, and that by far was his biggest pop ever. Yeah. That was his. That was the climax of his career. I think after that. He just, it just never, it just stopped clicking. And I just don't, I I think, I definitely think Ziggler is definitely better doing comedy and shit. No, I no, give him no, that. no. I feel like his, one of his, like, like his, his, his career got revived is when, like, the first um, draft, when it came back. How the fact that he was going against Dean Ambrose, he won that first battle, he turned into one contendership. Then that fact he was the program with The Miz. Um, where like it really was, um, was but the I think it, well, once again they're, they're close they're like brothers so like I definitely feel like when you when you feud with somebody that you have a personal connection with or when you have that type of bond with somebody it's a different type of it's a different type Listen, of like you live in his best life right. yeah you live in the best life but like I'm not mad at it at all but on top of that was it's just with him it's just like he had a lot of opportunity just like he was just losing dumb ways like what, what the hell like not even go back to a couple of years prior to that he lost his IC title. He had to be in the last Survivor in the Survivor Series. He went on to have the one of the greatest opening matches in TLC with Eric I mean, with Luke Harper. And he went on to others, but then it just flatlined. You lose matches, lose, 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 lose. You always have hot streaks, then you're just gonna lose the streaks. Well, I also think, anybody, no, but I also think I also think it's a lot of it's it's kind of what you said. It has a it, it might be a little bit with him, but it's also they never made his gimmick any more fresh than it was. Yeah. And, and, huh? Yeah. It was a, it, it, they never, he never, he probably never came up with something. And also, WWE never came with him with something. Like, when he had, like, a little gimmick going was when he's teamed up with somebody. Correct. Like, like, in like the beginning, when it was him, Big E, and AJ. AJ that, that was something, that because was it showed him as a leader. Mm-hmm. And then when he kind of was, like, the Shawn Michaels to... To um, Drew McIntyre, and Drew McIntyre was like his Diesel type of shit. Okay. That worked too. That was hot. And it, and but they they gave him quality programs. And I, I think that's why probably the, one of the biggest thing with Ziggler. But I have always loved Ziggler, and I, and I always thought that he wasn't used properly. But I also thought maybe he never came with them with anything. I think he, he probably got complacent because I think when they put that stamp of like oh or like when the kind of more the fans or when the like when the whole stigmatism of him. And that similarity of HBK came through. I think that was really the beginning of the end. Like I was just like, okay, so every time this man's gonna come out, everybody's gonna think he's trying to be HBK, and it's just like, oh, uh, like he had. I think he had to step out of that shadow, and he hasn't figured I mean, out he a way to do long, that. A long list of amazing matches. No, I, I agree. I, I agree. But once again, I just think once again, 
we and we've always talked about this on the podcast is like when everybody everybody there's accountability on both ends like i think as fans we sometimes always feel like it's wwe's fault it, it's writing it's creative but then also too we always talk about how there's certain wrestlers that have come to the table with something and it may be taking years but it's popped off like the greatest example is always gonna be naomi to me because i'm just like it took her almost three years for, for that glow shit day. For that glow shit to pop up on you, day. Start but, down. But like, kind of, I always feel Kofi like... mania. This always goes back to what I always say. Like, damn, I don't talk to you about some deep stuff. I don't smoke it. But I always say in the smoke section, I always say it's just like... Oh, I smoked all this weekend, so you can go ahead. <laughs> you didn't smoke weed, weed, weed. I did. All weekend. People say sour. No. I smoked all weekend. Well, well... So continue. So... I always say that, yo. When it wrong. It's you know how to go to the bathhouse. Sometimes, go like I think Dolph said it. A couple of them say I would say that sometimes you need to go away for a little bit and reinvent yourself. And I felt that every time Dolph came back, it was nothing really refreshing about his character. It's like, oh, Dolph is back. This, that, a third. So I guess I have to agree with you. It's just like only time I felt that his character got really refreshed is when we big Drew. Yeah. And. Even before that, I think it kind of got refreshed again when he got on SmackDown in the draft. But I just feel, I, I don't know, probably probably he needs to just leave WWE all together. Probably he needs to be like Cody Rhodes. But I just, definitely, but I just himself. don't even he'll make really, a dump, like He will make a buttload of money. But I feel money like is Ziggler, not a problem for him. But I feel like Ziggler is more, I, I feel like the opportunities for more money isn't with wrestling. Yeah. With him. Yeah. At all. He could be like John Morrison and start his own um, action movies. Yeah, I think like the movies. Probably, yeah, yeah. I think the improv, the com. I think that avenue where he kind I mean, of funny. has the passion. He was out here fucking Amy Schumer for a while. You yeah, know. now that she's pregnant. Amy Schumer didn't even know that. She wasn't though. But she's she, pregnant. She might have. Yeah, she might have good box though. So maybe I don't know. Anyway, white let's move on. Oh, okay. okay, let's move on to is what? everyone for a white person? No, I'm just saying. Well, maybe just for him. For a white person. Okay, you don't have to label it like just for a white Listen, person. The like, best coochie in the world is, is, is black. Yeah, but you don't actually. You don't know that because you never. Have I will never deny my queens. It's not about denying them, but like if a white chick had a good box, she got like, good like, box. I, I said I have that. The black girls have the best. Well, you don't know that. But you don't like Leo. Who has the best box? <sighs> you know what? I mean, at the, at the moment, like I mean, they're decent. Yo, black girls. Yeah, let's move on, son. Let's move on. Son. Who has better box? I'm not talking about this. Yeah, okay. See, that's what I figured. Like, I only say that because you have an experience. Doesn't matter. It does matter. Black girls have the best ones. For the black girls you mess with, has they the have the best one. I'm just gonna leave it, it at that. Like, it tastes like Mother Nature. <laughs> not all. <laughs> it tastes like weed. <laughs> Yo, my girls taste like weed. That'd be amazing. So we're gonna move right along. But that means that how that it might be bad hygiene. Or like how that means that she really smokes weed. But then what if she have like weed water? Would she taste like weed? Yeah. Hmm. Yo, what you know you know what I miss when girls squirt? That's a whole other conversation for a smoke section. So let's continue. You guys done? Yeah. Okay, great. So as everyone knows, we are approaching WrestleMania. And as everyone does know, during WrestleMania weekend, the Hall of Fame ceremony happens. Um, And it actually, this year, they switched it back. It used to be two nights before WrestleMania. Now it is the night before WrestleMania. Um, Hall of Fame ceremony will be at the Barclays Center. It was always at first. Yeah, but then they swapped it. Yeah. And then now they swapped it back. It's when NXT came back and came around. When they swapped, yeah. yeah. So it started off as the night before, but then it swapped. Yeah. And it hasn't been for the past few years. But this year, it will be the night before WrestleMania at the Barclays Center with the D Generation X headlining this year's class of 2018. D Generation X! Um, along with the Honky Tonk Man, the longest reigning intercontinental champion. And Tori Wilson was just announced, I think, last week. I guess. Still very fucking confused about that. Don't agree, but neither here or there. But this week, it was announced that the 10-time WCW World Tag Ten Team times. Champions and the 1995 and 1996 PWI's Tag Team of the Year, Harlem Heat, um, Booker T and Stevie Ray, will be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame 
Um, I'm super excited about it. I love, you know, growing up, like, Harlem Heat was just that tag team. It was them and Steiner Brothers. And it was very, like... What's good with your mans, though, B? Which man? What's good with your man, Q, B? I had He's problematic. I don't know. I had disrespected. So... So this this man B goes yo shout out to the Harlem Heat congratulations but it should have been the Stein brothers first nigga shut the fuck up see so the thing shut the I feel fuck up no, first so, of all so first that's first my man though I fuck no, with you he does who's Q? He, Quint, oh, Quinton who's Quinton Quintus Quintus who's Quintus uh, you don't know you don't know but you, you know but but this nigga um, this should have been the nature, nature of domination. See, but man, once again, we don't know how people formulate because clearly Tor- Tory Wilson's going in, so I don't know how they get this. Together. If that's the case, though, you're going to put like you could put DX. If you want to show the dominance on attitude error, this is based like a like a shade mostly the DX joy in there. You had the Harlem Heat. You should have had a nation towards the attitude error. She's towards the end. She's more like definitely like Ruth's 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 Yeah, she's towards the end because she got Tuck Man was definitely 90s. You, you know that how they got put right for old heads. Got put the right for old heads. But for the ninety period, you got this. You got Harlem Heat. That's well, great. one everybody knows. One tag team goes in. One stable goes in. They already at that. They're at capacity, so they're not going to put in another stable. Next year, for Hall of Fame, they can change the rules. They don't have to follow the protocol all the time. I mean, but imagine just... having the Harlem Heat. That might have been way too much. For no, them. no, 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 no. Harlem Heat to to make it up for what they did to Booker T. You know. That's what they did make it up for Booker They're making it up by giving him two fucking Hall right, of Fame right, rings. Are right, you kidding right, me? Right. But like, Everybody Harlem didn't get over that shit. Harlem Heat. It's because it was involved with Triple H. Exactly. <laughs> they should have Harlem Heat, the nation, right? The nation, right? That's a black ass Hall of Fame. Nah, 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 yeah, I totally that's not, that's don't agree, happening. though. That's not happening. You need the nation to be bad black. Yeah, but it's not happening. They're right their wrongs. They're writing, they're trying to write their wrongs behind If they made all black Hall of Fame, WWE will be set, B. But it's not. Think about it. it Think about well it. it Think about it, B. Think about it. They go on ESPN. It'll be all all Black Hall of Fame. Mm. It's not happening. It's not. And not after realistic. I, and after that, had to come on. Why not realistic? Who says that? It's not realistic. Why? Though. Why would you? So the thing is, why would you oversaturate one class so that the next year no one goes? There's mad black wrestlers, B. There's not that many black. It's wrestlers. not. That's what I'm saying. Like when you and I was just getting to that because when you think about there is five, five, five. Honestly, five. Harlem Heat was the only real black tag team in WCW at that time. Period. No, there's no others. You can't think nope. of anything. Nope, no. Nope. There nope. is no other. And don't include Virgil's ass in NWO because he never you did shit count. anyway. Oh, oh. No, 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 no. They gotta be more black tag teams. No, no, there isn't black tag teams. Why team. these niggas have been the ten time tag team champions? Yo, like, I know this one. And in that this, era, you know it you literally know was you know Steiner is? Brothers you know and Harlem Heat. You know what it is? You know what that it is? That is it. I've been spoiled by recent years, so all black tag teams in my head are now. Are now. Mm-hmm. Nigga, the last tag team after that was Crime Time. Yeah. Oh. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Yep, sure enough, guys. It was crime time. Crime time might be coming back, though. Uh. Oh, what's that guy's name that did the video? Glenn Davis? That's like Leo Rush, yeah, little about, mini me. Shout out to you, because you're actually low key funny. I don't like what you're saying to my brothers, but you're funny. I'm going to put that on the Yeah, table. but um, yeah, crime time was the last black, ch- black tag team. So. All black tag team? My thing is, is that I just. No, it wasn't, B. Okay. Who? Crime time. Prime time players. That was after. I was after. That was way after. Wow. Now, the, the current black. There's no all black teams. Nope. The new one is um, Street Profits. Yep. And there's like one. That gay black guy. Gay black guy? That's not a tag team, dog. That's not it yeah, at all. That's one what? person. This is a gay black guy. He's, He's not gay. Dead. He's Wait, just black. Gay black guy. He's talking about Dream. You oh. talking about Velveteen Dream? No, no, the, the light skin one. Same guy. kiss. Sunny kiss. No, 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 he was in the wrestling WWE. He probably talking about um, he primetime was, players. He's Darren, talking about Darren, Darren Young. Young, yeah. yeah, yeah he guy. was talking about, but he was in a tag oh, team. Oh, oh! The other tag team. Um, <laughs> Titus O'Neil and Apollo. That was after. That was after. So that was after. So, so, so there's been like... Okay. Interchangeable. There's been like three three black tag teams well, since, since, like, since Hall of Heat. Oh, shoot. And Titus was... In, he was also with Percy Watson. Yep. Once again, Dang. after... Crime. Yo, that's bad racist. They really interchanged with the other black people. 
Yeah. Yo, there's really no black tag teams. No, which is why this is amazing. Not only for the culture, but I definitely yeah. think it acknowledges. I'm slide this niggas Q's DM. Like, nigga, what is wrong with you, son? You know what it is? It's because when you look at it, uh, when you look at it full circle, when you look at the bigger picture, Steiner Brothers, in terms of years in the game, is definitely longer than Harlem Heat. So I get it. I get the whole like. Oh the, no, no! They had um, Mustafa and um, New Jack once again. Black tag team. Mustafa. Yeah, Mustafa and New Jack. Mustafa Ali? No, no. What's, what's his tag team name that um, New Jack had? Oh, wait, I wonder if Taz is kind of considered. No, it wasn't. No, no, no. It's Mustafa. Like, who was New Jack tag team partner? The other black guy. Look that up. New Jack. I don't know. The only person I thought he tagged with was... Um, fucking... I think he might have tagged with Sabu once upon a time. Listen... I don't remember Fuck him. this nigga Q for saying that shit. <laughs> like, I get it. I get no, it. No, I don't get it. I get it. No, no. It, it, it doesn't, it. It doesn't yeah. make sense. I get it, no. but I, I, I still No, think. there's nothing. Because the thing about it, Booker's, Booker T's already in the WWE. No, I, that's, no. But see, you have to take yourself. You have to take the WWE heat. They call it the gangsters. So, okay, okay. That. But 10 times champion? But Steiner Brothers have definitely had more accolades. But 10 times champions in, in that short period of time? What the fuck is that? Mustafa. Those are, the, those are the black tag team. But those like the nigga versions. Those like really My nigga, niggas. when was this? It, it was mad long ago. It's, it's back in 92. Yeah. But in what promotion? Oh, ECW. ECW. But, but the they didn't make an impact. They didn't make an impact like the that. The gangsters. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't get it, son. Oh, like, no. no I Another do black tag team. It was um, Mark Henry and D'Lo Brown. That was after Harlem Heat. That was during Harlem Heat. Um, um, Tail in. Um, Tail in. Still dirty. Those yeah. W did have a lot of black wrestlers. But we're talking about WCW. We're talking. About. But I'm just saying, like, Dang. you can't deny, like. I'm not denying. No, it. him saying that was just like, yo, shut up. It was like more of a snub, and I, and I, that's why I see both sides because on one side I see the whole like, listen, let's acknowledge the fact that Harlem Heat made an impact not only for the black culture but for wrestling. Period. Yeah. But we're not gonna deny Come that Steiner you, Brothers. Have made an impact and made. Well, we're not. No, no, the thing about it, it's one of those situations where nobody said anything bad about and, the sign of Don't bring like, it in. And I honestly feel like it's one of those things that where WWE probably approached Steiners already, and they and fucking Scott was like, "No, nah, I'm good, bro," because people have denied. Like fucking um, who the fuck keeps denying the fucking Hall of Fame ballot? Someone keeps doing it, and and, and it's more of like, do you, like. Look how long it took Macho to go in. And yeah, for him, for his brother to say, you know what, now he's passed, you know, let's do it. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, Bruno said Macho wasn't going in. Oh, see, yeah, he was like, I ain't fuck. See, I was like, he's not fuck. I'm not fucking with these niggas. But, but, but why they want to go in the Hall of Fame for? I mean, it's a great acknowledgement. I mean, but why like, wouldn't what not? What they don't fuck with WWE like but that. But because they don't fuck with the company like that. Like, Bruno only went in because Trips had a conversation with him. Because him and Vince had, Vince and Bruno had a falling out. That's the reason why. But I, the, the, one of the things is like, okay, why are you disrespecting? Like, let them have their shine. That's, that's what I hate. Like, if you go into the Hall of Fame, why am I going to say like, oh, he don't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? No, my nigga. Let him have his shine. That's, that's my yeah, issue with no, this No, but I just can't. There's, I, you just can't explain to me how Tory Wilson is in the Hall of Fame. Like, you just, like, you just, there's no reason why someone like Michelle McCool or like, you, you know, she didn't have Playboy issues. First of all, this bitch peak of her career was her dad sleeping with Dawn. Yeah, Dawn Marie. And dying. That was mad funny though. And then outside of that, she was A Rod's chick in the past. But she had mad Playboy issues. And she wouldn't have Playboy unless Sable did Playboy. So like once again. Oh, China. What the fuck are we doing here? Don't you be like a woman. I mean, oh, I really, want, like I really want to get a custom China <coughs> shirt for that weekend so bad. That's what you said. There's a couple of mine. I'm totally buying the DX chocolate jacket and wearing it to Wally Mania. FYI. Hmm, interesting. Just gonna throw that out there. So, our superstar spotlight of the week? Uh, wait, before we move on, who else do you guys think will be inducted this year? I, I do think it's a really good mixture of a class, even though I still disagree with Tori. Celebrity. What celebrity do you think will oh, go yeah, in? Oh, yeah, we're discussing um, law firm. What? Oh, Cindy Lauper. I was thinking. She's not Hall of Fame? No. Did I say that's a celebrity? Did they put Muhammad Ali in Hall of Fame yet? No, I don't think so. Should be in there. He did one thing. 
one is what is what put them on the map. That WrestleMania put them on the map. It's one thing. I'm the fuck, I'm putting them in there. Uh-huh. That and Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson all of them? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He is, he is. Tyson is in. Yeah, we had that conversation. Yeah. I was, Tyson, I Tyson, was. Tyson's in. Um, what celebrity should be in there? I don't know. We shall see. I don't know. But for those that um, aren't going to Supercard, um, Ring of Honor, um, New Japan, G1, um, you can definitely go to the Hall of Fame next Saturday, the night before WrestleMania at Barclays. Um, and tickets are already on sale. So How much are tickets going for? I don't know. But literally, when I went to Orlando and went to Kurt Angle's Hall of Fame, because that was the year he got in, literally, we bought tickets for $18. Day of. Legit. I think I might go. I kind of want to go because I'm just like DX. It's right after. DX and Harlem Heat alone, I'm like, shit. <coughs> it's right after Hog. So I, just, I might just, just do Hog and just go. Because, yeah, that day I'm I'm going to do Access. I'm not going to do it. I don't have a job, so I'm going to do Access on Friday. No, we're going to go to um, WrestleCon. Oh, yeah. So we can meet the nation. Yeah. Wait, do you have that on Friday off? Do you work Friday? What? Friday. I can take it off. Okay. All right, so let's go to our superstar spotlight. Do you want to do the honors and talking about our superstar spotlight? Superstar week? spotlight of the week, ladies and gentlemen. It's the golden one, Cassandra Golden. This Arkansas-based female made her debut in 2017 after training, including three months learning from Lance Storm, one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. One of the most underrated technical wrestlers of all time. 2018 would be her breakout year, making appearances for a number of promotions, and her 2019 has started on a perfect as ever. As in late January, she won her first championship, the Action Pack Wrestling Women's Championship, and only three weeks later won her second, the American Hostile Championship Wrestling Women's Championship. She wrestled for Action Pack Wrestling in Louisiana, committed to wrestling in Memphis, Tennessee, and American Hostile Championship Wrestling in Missouri, and Dallas Fort Worth All Pro Wrestling. This lady is golden. So, as everyone knows, in honor of Women's History Month, the month of March, every every superstar spotlight will be a female, preferably a female of color, because, you know, hashtag black excellence. Um, I'm black, y'all! So, um, what are your thoughts on Miss Cassandra? Um, she is fairly, you know, once again, new to professional wrestling, but has made a lot of noise, kind of in that kind of like southern Midwest area. Um, so I want to go, go against Tasha from the, from the Bronx. Puerto Rican fight. mommy. Puerto Rican mommy. Hey, mommy. Is that, is that fucked up to say? Hey, mommy? Yeah. Is it okay to call a girl and say, hey, mommy, to a girl? I've never, I've never done it. I mean, yet. I feel like it's still 2000, but. I say whatever I want. No, I just say, hey, mom. What's up, mama? Mama. I call a girl mama, so. Call a girl a little mama? Call a little mama? I said, N- nigga, what are you, a 60 year old man? Just <laughs> <laughs> nigga out there called little mama, get over here. Get over here, little mama. Little mama. mama. I talk to you just like, like 5 a.m. up, so I'm like, what's up, mama? They're what? what? Call them mama. No, but what was you, What are they? They're usually like 5, 7 and up. They hype. So, what does that have to do with mama, though? <laughs> because, you know. Because you feel like they, they dominate you, so, so they call them mama? They're mad mother so. What? Oh, so, but, so mentioning the height had nothing to do. You, you, you ever mom. drank breast milk? <laughs> were you breast? We got breastfed. Absolutely not. My mother died when I was like three. Mm-hmm. Like, nigga, nigga, Still breast means you can't breastfeed. Ain't nobody breastfeed. Patients don't do that. Never know. What? <laughs> you be drinking breast milk? No. Because you do with mad chicks with chicks with kids. Would you ever eat a placenta? I heard that shit is really good for you. Yeah. I probably would. Really? Chop up and put some brown rice. Some broccoli, mm-hmm. some hot sauce on it. I don't know. About some it. kale. Oof! Mm. I just drink it. I'll eat it too. I don't care. Oh, you just. If it says that how that, that, if it says that how that, it makes my beard grow, I wear. It. I don't know. I'll eat it. So, if something makes your beard grow, you're gonna do it. It's placenta. It's healthy. It's for my wife. Yeah. It's part of your child. I already done. Have you ate it before? No, I only had a blood clot. You wait. What? what? Blood clot. You, you ate a blood clot. Yeah. How do you How do you, do you that? eat a blood clot? I was eating her while she was on her period, so it was a blood clot or whatever she was called. Okay. Wow. Rumor of the week. Eminem and WWE wow. partnering with two. Let's just move on. Let's move on. No, we're not doing this. No, nope. we're not doing this, man. Nope. We're not doing this. Nope. What? What are we promoting? That's yeah. Nope. They're talking 
Wow. Yo, but we were so concerned, like. I don't want to talk about this. Blood clot. I don't want to like, talk about this. I don't want to talk about this. Don't get me wrong. I've I'm rolled. Sorry. I've rolled the red line. Numerous times. I don't want to talk about it. But have you ate the red line? I don't no. know. Like this nigga. This nigga nasty, Yo, son. Please don't continue. I'm about to violate it. Yo, shut up. <laughs> Why are you getting so mad? He's just telling don't me. Don't shut up. I don't care. He's no one cares. Y'all not going to keep your Yo, I do not want to hear that. All right? Wait, I, I feel like I'm about to vomit. Like, literally, vomit almost came out of my mouth. I taste vomit. Shut up. We're going to change the subject now. I don't want to know. Text him. Text him. Eat. <laughs> Text him in. Text him in. Like, I feel like that's like the true meaning of what the blood clot. <laughs> what the blood clot? Did you say that? <laughs> Why you want to say that? What the blood clot? What the blood clot? What the blood clot is this? Oh, it really is a blood clot. Yeah, like it really. No, I was like, what is this shit in my mouth? I was like, it was like. I'm Let's pause it real quick. So we're gonna end off Gorilla's position, behind Gorilla's position, with our uh, uh, rumor of this week. So there had been some rumbles that Eminem and WWE were partnering for 2K20, um, where Fightful.com reported that the artist, recording artist, had reached a deal, um, which included appearing on an episode of SmackDown on Fox live and then also doing a custom championship belt for the Detroit native. Um, but then on the flip side, there were um, his reps issuing a statement denying any type of deal um, with WWE and for 2K20. Um, and they state that there was a very brief conversation that involved a third party in 2K Sports, not Eminem's team. It has not gone beyond preliminary discussions and any report to the contrary are false. Right now, there are no plans to future pursue it. So before everyone gets hype, um, I feel like every good video game, you know, I really don't play video games like that, is the soundtrack, is the music behind the game. Um, I think it, in, it, it embodies, you know, what the product is. It's basically the soundtrack of, of the life of the game. So um, my question to you guys is, um, if not Eminem, who would you like to see partner with 2K20? I don't care. Um, for me... Can I finish? <clears throat> Damn. All right, why you don't care? Let's just go there. Because... If it's the same gameplay from two years, what's the point of having a what if it isn't? Listen, when it comes to these 2K, these 2K come out, and like, ever since they took over, THQ went out of business, and, you know, 2K games took over, it's just been microtransactions. Like, the last game, it was better, but they just got to have the same features that they had years ago. Like, I don't care if that Diddy on it. I don't care if my own mother rapper on it. If the gameplay sucks, and I could go back and play older games and have a better experience... I don't care who's doing the soundtrack. I don't care because majority of the time, you're going to be hearing the matches here in the ring and stuff like that. I've been through an era where during the matches, it was just beats. I've been through an era like all you hear is just like... Instrumentals. Beats, same thing. Same thing. No, but I'm just saying. Yeah, like I don't need word to enjoy a wrestling game. I need fire gameplay. So do you you have that same vibe when you play like NBA 2K? I don't play that. Oh, okay. It's the same game for the past four years. Okay. Like, right. literally, now it's worse because they want you to spend real world money just to get certain objects in the game. Like, listen, you get your character to get up to the level you need it, you have to grind for hours. So, you have to get a micro transaction. You're going to spend real world money. The game is $60. You end up spending another, um, let's say, give it to another $80. Let's get your character at $99. Let's get your character a decent amount. Then the next year, you got to do it all over again. Yeah, that's just video games. That's just gaming. No, I'm not doing that every year. I'm sick and tired of having so my character. You're thing. not going to do that part no. of the game, which is fine. This is why I don't but buy 2K. But there are people in the world and that will all, spin, spin, And they'll all, all agree with me. Yo, they, they have won't. the most they fire soundtrack. But if the, game, if the gameplay is trash, they're not going to care. All right. So, Wilkins, what do you think? Right. Or who would you like to hear? Because I think, I mean, when I've seen other guys play like 2K and I've heard like the sound, like songs in the game, that got me excited. But that was, I was menu, just though. like, but that was just menu. But in the match, it don't have it on. Not the match per se, but I'm just saying like the whole setup or just 
if a nigga got the game on and you know, cause y'all niggas like just leaving the game on sometimes, you hit the soundtrack so you know the songs and you be like, oh, okay, maybe that's a, all right, cool. But okay. several so, kids, what do you think? All right, cool. So we need to add more young blood to this. You know what? I would prefer if it was like a young up and coming artist to do this. Cause it works out a little bit, but as young, you tell me this like I care. <laughs> but my nigga, I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to the people that's listening to it. So you need to relax, cause the nigga about to about to talk some mud. Um, is it is it young boy M- NBA NBA young NBA young boy would be great for this? You know who that is? Uh-uh. Oh, okay. So you know who that is? I know what it is. So. Yeah, you know who that is? Yeah. NBA young boy would be great for this. Hype, he's like one of the hottest young new rappers out right now. I think he'll be great to curate the sound because Eminem is awesome. But right now we need to be into like like he said, upgrade the game a little bit. It's lagging behind. So one of the best things to upgrade to, to, to add to a game is the sound. So if you upgrade the sound with somebody like NBA Youngboy, that'd be fucking phenomenal. And he's from a great camp too. So you can get like other rappers from that camp to be on there. Like City Girls can be on there. Um, they're from the same camp. Yeah, that explains why I don't even know. That explains so much more, actually. Why? Because I'm like, really? From that Coach K camp, that shit is amazing. Okay. So, um, um, Yachty could probably be on that thing. Matter of fact, get that whole, get that whole, get that whole team because Migos is on that camp too. Matter of fact, even Migos would be better than that. I don't think NBA Youngboy's not with that camp. Actually, no, I apologize. But that whole group of trap, like, get the even the Migos would be great for that. Matter of fact, the Migos should, 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 should really curate that soundtrack. Okay. That would be better. Don't care. Anyway, so let's All right, move so on. let's move on to the WWE recap, as everyone knows. And special shout out to Miss Felicia for hosting. Our viewing party for Fastlane. It was the last stop to the for WrestleMania, and she was um, willing, able, and able to come out and um, and hang out with the boys at the bar. So thank you, my love, um, and I apologize for my okay. absence. I shot my personal camera. life happens. I'll no, 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 I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, but let's talk about Fastlane real quick. Once again, this is the last review before um, our Super Bowl to wrestling WrestleMania. So one up, one down, gentlemen. What for fast lane, yeah. I'd give it a medium. My thumb was in the middle. A medium. I didn't think it was great. I didn't think it was bad. I think fast lane was literally what it was supposed to be, which was, hey, we're gonna continue pushing these storylines for WrestleMania. We're gonna add a little bit more sauce, and we're gonna tie it up at WrestleMania. Because if you look at, if you go down the list, Charles versus Becky was a DQ. That, that didn't solve anything. That but was trash. But, but it helped put like Becky into the match for WrestleMania. The Shield versus Baron Corbin, Drew McIntyre, solid match, but it was like the last roll until WrestleMania when, when Dean decides to fucking leave. Mm-hmm. Um, tag Team Champions, what that did was set up The Miz and Shane. Did I not say those? Shane we all said that. We all knew that. So, it set up The Miz and Shane. The Tag Team Championship match, that was cool, but what happened after? When it comes to Raw, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? These, these are all things that's being set up. Asuka versus Mandy Rose. You're setting up something else. No, you really aren't, though. She choked out. Yeah, but then... It, but and then that's like that, which we'll get to. She choked, she choked she, out her homegirl. She, she, so. slipped on them, she slipped on the apron. That's not setting up shit. It's setting up the, setting up the, the breakup between her and her Sonya. Yes, that's a setup. Not the setup... But it's like... But, but, that's, but that's what I'm saying, though. This is all storyline being set up for WrestleMania. And other things going on. The best match for me that night was the Fatal 4-Way match. R Truth, Samoa Joe, Andre, Andrade, and Rey Mysterio. That match was set. That shit wasn't even supposed to be on the main card. It was supposed to be Andrade versus Rey Mysterio on the, on the pre show. And someone woke the fuck up and was like, no. Nope. No, they were, they were literally writing this show as the show was going on last that <coughs> night. It felt like they were writing it on. But solid medium, I have, I'm not mad at the show or really bad or think or really happy about the show. Okay. It was a solid medium. All right, what do you think, Mr. Black? I enjoyed it. You did? Okay, what parts did you enjoy? Let's talk about it. I feel like this is one of the best fast lanes. You know, you know like, what? I kind of agree. It's one of the best one. And it I gave actually... me shades like, of the, of the Ruthless Aggression era. Like how that those in-between B pay-per-views 
Like, you don't expect much from it, but it'd be so action-packed. But they, yeah, they kind of make, they and, make their mark, right? right? It's just, kind of yeah, it's that. just like, the one biggest surprise of the night, like, one thing I liked about it was the storytelling. Like, the pre-show was used, like, Sunday Like Heat. Like, gave him shades of Sunday Like Heat, where, like, they continue storyline, like, you have to watch the pre-show, you have to watch Heat, because you might miss something. Mm -hmm. And carry it on to the main, and carry on to the main show. I like the fact that Simone Joe said that, nah, B, I take all of them out. And he did took all of them yes. to really solidify him as this is this title and we're going to push forward with him. And even with the whole Miz, Shane, and the Uso match, like the fact they was playing chicken, he was like, I dare you. And they collided. I've never seen that in WWE. And overall, it was a very good pay-per-view. Yeah, no. There's no real complaints. I think, and, I, and I always say that, you know, the card on paper may look lackluster, yeah, yeah. but it's always how you position each match. Exactly. It's always how everything starts off. And I thought that them starting the, the pay per view off with Miz and Shane and Usos mm -hmm. was the, the, a genius idea. I would have never thought that would have been the opening match. So them doing that yeah. first, I was like, okay, now we're on a good foot. And then everything else kind of fell into the right position. Even with like, like the filler match with the um, Coffee Kingston, that was a good, that was a good match. Um, too bad for Mustafa Ali for getting booed. He kind of was placed in that random position. Like, I never really, oh, whatever to him. Like, oh, by the way, stop it, throwing this nigga in the I'm shit. I'm sorry, it wasn't NBA Young Boy. It was Lil Baby I met. Sorry, I confused the two times. I still, still don't even know who that nigga is either. Nah, so NBA Young Boy is part of quality control, I and that whole group should take over at, um WM, the W two K twenty. But anyways, go ahead. As long as the, as long as the game plays the same, don't care. Um, yeah, I just felt that. Everything felt right. It was great pacing. It felt shades of the ruthless aggression era. And once, oh, we're talking about Raw, about why I, why I comment about something. But overall, love the pay per view. Okay. This is this is going in the the watch list for the pay per view. Yeah, I do think for the you know over. It's one of those pay per views you will remember. Mm -hmm. Even though you may not remember everything on the card, you definitely remember this is where Shane turned on this. This is mm -hmm. where. Ronda's yeah, this random ass was set up for, for WrestleMania. No, it was, you know what? And I think now with the type of creative team that they have, mm -hmm. that they are legit, they are placing things logistically better. Yeah, even yeah. Nia Jax and Tamina, like after they lost the match, I'm, it's like super you still show, like, like, it's, like you get Beth Fiend back I in mean, the I mean, but ring. I definitely didn't like the fact that it was a roll up. I'm just like, no, I don't care about. I mean, I'm just dumb thing. That's not. I mean, yeah. like how that. I mean, I'm not talking about the whole uh, that down mind because there's many ways to win a match. Like I watched match got a guy got kicked by 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 his finisher. He win by thirty no, seconds. No, but that's a finisher. So, that's different. Like you can pin championship match roll up. Mm -hmm. Listen, why you play two K? Two K WWE. Was the roll up nigga. Like I won my first title with a roll up. Like, you'll see. So, I mean, so I'll never deny it, that. But overall, it was good pay per view. Tamina beating up all those old heads and stuff like that. You felt like that's how you cement them. That's how you add more layers to the character. Those are, what I'll say a couple of shows back, the finding moments for that tag team. You okay. need to have the finding moments. You need to have those moments that set you apart. I agree. So let's talk about Raw. Once again, we are in the road to WrestleMania and it, things are heating up. Like I think I, I'm super excited about this whole Tamina, Nia... Beth Phoenix and Natalia situation. Like I, I'm actually invested in that. Yo, that Hands match down. is nothing but pogs. It is gonna be like a brutal like nah, bro, so type of like they all, they're all mad like, dead. type shit. And they all hit hard. Jesus Christ. Oh, they came, Beth Phoenix right. came on the screen. I said, oh, and Natalia? Yeah, you oh. forgot about that I shit. I said, oh, this is different. You forgot about the tag team. Yeah, no, you forget about And that's why I said, when you put people together, whether you put them against each other or together, I'm and they have moment. a hit, they have a bond outside and inside mm -hmm. of the ring because some of Beth Phoenix's best, best matches were with Natalia. You see, period. You see, you see, this is where, like, I definitely feel bad for one of those eras. Because I cannot remember, like, collectively, a lot of those women matches, they all come to, like, they said Beth Phoenix versus, um, Beth Phoenix versus uh, Natalia. Since all those matches was, like, five minutes, two minutes, all the matches I literally bunch up in my head as one. Well, that's why you have the WWE Network for 999 cheap plugs to go back and watch And them. that's why I felt like these women wrestlers would never get their true, like, 
respect because those matches were so short. And I feel bad. Well, it's not about sometimes. Like, Come it's on. not always about the length. No, he but really he, he, he has a point. He has a point. But I get it. But matches, once again, you got to remember, like, the time and the era that they were in, they were basically the foundation of what women's wrestling is. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's not about fear it's, because it's one minute, two minutes, two minutes. Minute so, literally, like, for example, about for example, the AJ Lee, every time that she defend that title, literally in my head, it's I could literally fit it on a 10 minute reel of all her matches, and I'll be, and after that, and say, this all her matches, the greatest highlights. And that's bad because these women would never. Get their real respect. As a, For example, Victoria. You go back to who's the pressure answer. Victoria. I can have college Victoria matches in my head right now. Think about it. China. College China matches in my head. Jacqueline. Ivory. All these matches. I can have matches. Go back. I remember this matter at this moment. Now, Rashad McCool, all that. The reason I remember Rashad McCool so much because they had that stupid tag team where like, they, they divided the Divas Championship and it was in half. That's what I remember. But literally, all their matches was like two minutes or five minutes long. Like that's and I just feel like this is why Beth Phoenix and they cool, but I'm excited because they really could go now. Beth Phoenix my the era, the glamour's on. Yo, oh my that gosh. is yo. So I'm pretty, I up, I'm um, pretty more like confident like that I would want to do Mania just for interests alone. Like exactly. I already know well, which interest is gonna be. Well, going what, to what, one of the biggest me. things is that nobody ever talks about is how better Nia's gotten in the ring. No, I feel like that's always a conversation starter. Like, because then people will be like, oh, Nia's gotten better in the ring. But then you'll be like, but how? And then you can explain it. No, Samina. Samina has brought out the best in Nia's jacks. But it's, once again, that type of No, and and I understand it, but it's also chemistry in general. Because the way they set up the matches a lot of times, like, any good tag team, they cover up each other's flaws. Strengths and weaknesses, correct. And they bring, like... And Tamina has done an amazing job working with Naya. And now that they're going to be going against home, these two homegirls who know how to fucking wrestle. And and I always said this. People was like, no, that's not true. When Naya goes against women who can go physically, not can wrestle, but can go physically. It's a whole different ball game of what's going on. Like that Elimination Chamber match. Yeah. Every chick in that match can go had to go physically because it was elimination chamber, and Nia looked amazing in that match. Mm-hmm. And so did every other woman. So this is like what you guys are talking about. This is a very exciting, exciting little feud that they got going on. It's what and I, I spoke to someone about this earlier. What I what I don't like um, is now they're hitting the start button and building Seth and, and Brock, and I just feel like it's too little, too late. No, no they have enough time. They that have points. under no you you have twenty eight days. What story like what's so hard about tell a story about Brock seven divided seven. by twenty eight is four. Oh, four. Like literally like what's so hard about building up Seth versus Brock? Brock barely comes there. Seth literally tells a story like this is Seth Rollins. He will get the title. That's it. There's not much story. Like, see, but I nothing. think, see, and that's where I always think where the fuckery's gonna, they gonna pull the rug and Brock may still walk out meant like champion and people be like, oh shit, like, these are the things, but I'm just saying compared to everyone, compared to everyone else's storyline, it's the lack, it's the most lackluster building. Ill, um, no, I don't forget it and, it, and just because someone's injured doesn't mean, Becky Lynch was injured and that still was going. But just Seth because was, an injury doesn't mean you lack the storytelling. Yeah, but, but do you want Seth? Period. Do you want Rich Seth missing WrestleMania again? But it's not. You're, it's not about the physicality of it. It's about, and I'm saying, look at Becky. Becky. Becky and Charlotte hasn't wrestled in hmm, months. In, in a quite some time. It's not about you being in the ring and physically going to build a story. I understand it's about that, but... it's about actually telling the story and building it. And they're starting to build it now when they had Paul and they had a random ass Shelton Benjamin. But I thought it was dope because I was like, I forgot about how the two of them went to the same college and they've been they known each other for years. Like it was a great was history lesson. College. But I was like, but what does that have to do with Seth and Brock? But <laughs> like, all I'm saying is this way. Seth and Brock don't need to tell a lot of stories. They really don't. Like, like it's, it's, it's not, I like the but fact that... But you have everyone else going at a 10 with storytelling. So, you rather see you rather see Paul Heyman come out every week and bicker with Seth, or you rather see the more evolution of the evolution of, 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 the, evolution of the triple threat match? I'd rather Each see... No, week. I'd rather see a build-up for both. 
There is a build up. The build up is simple. Yo, Seth said it before he, he went a little vacation. Yo, I'm gonna get to the title. This out of third from Brock. He got to the point. Not everything needs to have, yo. He did this to me. He had sex with my mother. They killed my dad. And now, you know, I'm going to get that car that he stole from me. Now I'm going to win this side third. I'm sorry. Sometimes, I just feel like if, no, it, if, this is, if this is our, if this is wrestling's number one, like, this is our, this is our Super Bowl. I feel like if everyone else is pulling a story, even fuck, if you got even fucking Niggas that haven't wrestled in years, you more invested in their match than the Universal Championship match. I just feel like that's a little bit of a problem. Literally, when that's Seth, there was no storyline built. When they have when Seth won that, and they show the card, and they show that graphic between him and Brock, pop. Literally, mm-hmm. everybody was excited for it. Yes, mm-hmm. now Seth is gonna come this time out there to get the title from Brock and what bring on team every week. What if he doesn't though? Then, then where do we go? But that was not the point. The point of the matter is, it's like it don't need to have a long, drawn out story. Where like, yo, I don't mind. I take a back seat because let's give the women a chance. The main event more time. But it's not about you divvying time. Like it just, it just means that. All I'm saying, and you guys, I'm sorry, y'all friends complaining about the saying, It's stuff. not about complaining. All I'm saying is that if there's literally every other match. Having some form of of a storm, some form of you know where this direction is going, you you're invested in them, you you're excited about it. I'm saying as a at myself, I'm just saying personally, I'm not excited about Seth and Brock, and it goes back to even and I was talking to him actually with a coworker of mine. It goes back to even Seth winning the Royal Rumble, which I actually totally didn't want. Keyword you didn't want. No, right, but once again, this is a debate. This is an opinion based episode show, so I'm giving my opinion about it. I'm not saying you guys can agree. You guys can agree, disagree. Doesn't matter. I'm, I'm I've always said my opinion. I because I can't speak for everybody, so I want that to be clear. But I'm saying is is that out of everyone else, it's the it's the least match of the of the card that I'm like, oh okay. Because to be honest, they could pull the same bullshit they did in the Rollins and they build it they, they did a not even a build, but they did Roman versus Brock and everyone thought Roman was gonna win and boom, who won? Brock won again. So I'm just saying, like, you gotta get it's, it's a give and take. But um what else did you like about Raw? We never talked about Raw. Yeah we did. No we did it. Oh not yet oh go then go for it. <laughs> Um, it just threw me off. Rose was cool. Who's the next thing? Rose cool. You know, Bobby Lashley getting the title back. Which makes no sense. Bobby Lashley getting the title back. Like, I really enjoy that. Um, the one thing that I really like about this whole, they're pushing, they're... So, the one thing I really like about this, this thing is definitely on his phone. Like, so anyways, so it's just like, one thing that I liked about... I give WWE credit is they pushing the envelope, but they're doing it the right way. Because the whole Drew McIntyre versus Dean Ambrose match, it wasn't the straight up how Ruth's aggression map blood on it. Yo, they did the most by doing the most minimal things. Like how the ending that he lined them up with the whole staircase or with the whole um, with the stair railing and kicked his head off. Yo, I was still excited for that. And it had to do it and like it had not one ounce of blood. Is you can still push the envelope without having not an ounce of blood. That's what I like about that match. Is like they showed that diversity in that match. Like you, like at one moment I seen like when Drew McIntyre about to throw Dean off the scares. I mean off like the off like the um off like the um off like the VIP section. Yo, I really thought he was gonna really was gonna do that. It's just like it cracked a little little teases like yo, he actually might do that. Like I like what they doing with the product. Raw felt like an added it felt like a roof of aggression era. Like okay. it was so much all over the place, but it was organized chaos. It had something for everybody. And I have no really no big downs for it at all. I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. So what gives your thoughts on the good old raw? Um so look, look, let's get it started. Nia Jax with the titles was one of my ups because I'm in love with both of them. <laughs> Drew McIntyre defeated Dean Wait, Ambrose. Wait, Nia won? I didn't really see, I didn't see the match. Um, there was no contest, I think it was. Damn. 
nice points for me. So I was gonna think about that. I was like, what the fuck? Go ahead. My down is um, Allison Black and Ricochet versus Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. Because I don't understand what they're trying to do right now. And I know, from what I'm hearing, is that Allison Black and Ricochet are going to, um, they're officially going to get a permanent home after WrestleMania. Yes, because like, if everyone doesn't know, the week after WrestleMania um, is a superstar shake-up super shake in Toronto, in Montreal, Canada. I didn't like the opening segment with um, The Shield. And I Roman Reigns doing the announcement, huh? I thought it was the only one that thought that. I was like, it was a, it, it seemed really forced, and Dean looked way too uncomfortable. And I, because and you can see, you know, when you about to leave a job and you checked out. Yeah, that, and that's what it was. That so thing is checked out. So it, he was completely checked out, and I was like, yo, this needs, this needs to be cut short. Well, she's not doing it at all. What I <laughs> didn't, what I did enjoy. Was Shelton Benjamin and Paul Heyman? Yes. It was unexpected, well written segment where they're like, "Yo, Brock's not here, but you know what? I'm gonna send one of my other goons at you." And I like the fact that that they're villainizing Paul Heyman even more. Well, Paul Heyman's in job, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was beautiful about it. It was like, "Yo, I'm gonna send a hitman out on him, make him a little weak." And what they were saying within that segment was. Brock never had time to prepare for anybody, technically. And now he has the time to prepare for you. But hold up for a second. Let's get you a little beat up a little bit. Shelton. Awesome. Great job on that one. I didn't like Kerrang over Stop Apollo. That was a little off. But regardless, Raw was solid. It was a good post pay per view Raw. Like, okay, now we got, we got what we did for, for, for fasting. Let's move it even more forward. Right. All right, so let's talk about good old SmackDown. Are we on the road to Kofi Mania or not, guys? Let's talk about it. What are your thoughts on SmackDown this week? Okay, yeah. So, Kofi... That Kofi segment was great, but the segment of the night was Randy Orton versus AJ Styles. Randy pulled out one of his best promos in a long time. And the reason why it... And so did AJ. And the reason why it worked, because it solidified something really dope that every wrestling mark has been going through for years. And that's indies versus WWE or anything not WWE versus WWE. Mm -hmm. And those two guys are like legit representations of uh, both cool. sides of the coin, mm -hmm. which is WWE and non-WWE. Because mm -hmm. while I'm AJ being WWE now, is it four years? AJ, oh my God, yeah. Oh, yeah. I always look at AJ like, Yo, you're, you're in WWE though. Like, so, so I still get that. It's like, four what? years and then you have literally a third generation WWE superstar standing there. Right. And... Mm -hmm. Everything that they said was like shots at each other, shots at each other, shots at each other. So but it was like bad. relevant shots. One of the most relevant thing that AJ said, besides him calling, saying what we talked about. The Yo, I literally yelled at my team. I was like, yes, like he gets it. Like that's exactly what I said. It was him saying, yeah, you may hate the indies, but not just not for, for verbatim, but, no, but like, you, you may hate the indies, but you're surrounded by every indie nigga guys in the background is from the indies, from which the indies. is true. If you look at the card right now... Yeah, first of all, let's talk about it. Your U.S. champion, indie guy. Let's talk about your WWE champion, total indie, indie guy. guy. That's, that's like, it. No, like, your U.S. your champion for SmackDown is literally an internet the darling. The premier indie guy from indie his guy. time. Like, and the guy who's facing Brock is an indie guy. Indie guy. I just, but I, I do, I did like the back and forth because they were talking facts. And it flowed right. And when and when Randy said, "Bitch, I'm looking for rent because this is my house," I was like, "Oh shit!" And then he said, and, and then like the whole AJ's like, these are the things that okay, they set that up at Fastlane. Really, they've been setting it up before that. though. Well, it was I'm sorry, it was the week before the SmackDown before Fastlane is when it he kind of bumped into him that. and he cut it and he cut him and they talked to the shit. But what you're doing right now, and this is what I've always said. A nigga doesn't need to wrestle. No. Cut a couple promos. Get me involved in the storyline. 
And this is what the old school shit used to do. Mm-hmm. Like the rock like, was niggas was not wrestling. No, like, niggas, like, 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 like niggas come out, talk their shit, go to the back. They may wrestle a dark match during the week, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you talk your shit, you go, go the fuck home. But you're setting up the storyline. Like every D, like if you go back and watch on the network, every like almost every DX Nation promo segment was definitely like ten minutes long. Period. Yeah, and it, like, was, he was like, and it was a good setup. But besides that, like. Raw was Raw was good. The New Day versus Vince McMahon segment, so, like Josh said, he didn't like it, but I enjoy Kofi. This is a Josh. Kofi, Kofi, like that's your man's girl. No, I'm just saying, like he he was, you know, you know, he was talking about it. Like you know, how Josh was just like, oh, I didn't really feel it. Like they, I think he's saying that, like that because movie. of course, they like they look like they would say something like that. No, but <laughs> I think it's just once again, you gotta kind of. Believe the character, like believe the gimmick, and I just think he said that off of not really believing like the Kofi, like the storyline. Well, the thing is, I get it because I listen to him on like podcasts, especially Edge and Christian's podcast when he talks about how much of a fan. Like he was like, "Yo, I'm running." I'm, he's like, "Cause when Edge and Christian called in, Kofi was like, "Yo, I just I, I locked myself in the room to get away from my family real quick so I can do this podcast with you." Mm-hmm. That just I already know him outside because like, I'm a, I'm that kind of guy that when I like a character, I want to know your entire life. Mm-hmm. Even yeah. porn stars. Hey, K- K- <laughs> There's laws against you. Huh? There's laws against you. <laughs> that's not funny. I like that that's a line that you try to use all the time. Yeah, but like... like there's laws against both of y'all. I you want to find out John Cena's house? This well, I'm definitely going to buy that thing out. There's laws against stalkers. Def- I'm not stalking. I'm not stalking. I'm not stalking. I just want. I just want. How's get, that a stalker? I want to know more about the people that I I'm like. I'm not saying I'm about to trap. I'm about to camp out at his house. I don't not, but, but, but no, the no, thing no. is, it's I'm like telling you that. Why I like you it. say one thing, do another thing. No, it throw me off. Well, yeah, no, I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. So why I liked it was because I know he's a family man, and a lot of us are family men, and then like I'm missing out on that baby type of moment, and you also got to understand like he doesn't complain. I like bro, know. like you were in the main event spot. And completely ripped the, ripped away from that spot, and was you are a top guy, and then you're in the back eating K like like two months later. Yeah, you, your whole career had to be revived literally with two other niggas. Yeah, which when Vince said that, I was like, yeah, and, and, the thing, and then when Vince said true. yes, <laughs> Vince saying that comment, you're like, yo, you know what? That makes sense. Cool. Even though technically speaking, he deserves to be if, if he wins the title. It solidifies him as a Hall of Fame career. Nigga, and if Kofi Kingston becomes champion in New Jersey at MetLife on the biggest stage, nigga, is going to party that's, that's, until like it's 1990. Like the bars blow it. Every place is going to erupt. Is going to in, I just find it really funny though. Like literally like almost every segment they had on SmackDown, like niggas was chanting Kofi. Like that, that... Like once again, they're, like you they're got listening, it. and the, thing, the fact that they, they put them, and the way they're setting it up, and I know it's a little bit of the Daniel Bryan situation. No, it's not a little bit. It's a lot. It's a lot, but <laughs> it feels fresh to me. And the way that niggas came out after he pointed out everything, he got a fight. That shit was fire, bro. That shit was fucking fire to me. Like, yo, all right, let's do it. And then you gotta have friends like Biggie and yo, Xavier. Yo, uh, no bullshit, y'all. Y'all better be. The Big E and Xavier to, to my Kofi. Cause that I, shit was. If your friends are not like that, then you need new friends. Like, they came out like, yo, he needs this. He deserves like, this. Yo, and I dead ass thought Vince was gonna fire them, and I was just sitting there praying, like, Lord, please. Like, and you, you see what? That emotion came them. out because that's what it is. Uh, Even like, though it's, it's, it's a ripoff, and then, like, you have, um,. You have Daniel Bryan saying he's a B-list. He's a B-list. I was like, look at the the, the teeth. Awesome the storytelling, mm-hmm. but that's my take. All right, SmackDown. Talk to me a little bit. SmackDown was good. <clears throat> it shows that that they diverse from each and every week. You had match, match, matches for a couple of weeks. Now you have more segments, a couple of tag team matches. We got to the point, and I loved it because to go back with the whole call for Kingston is. I've been watching Kofi since ECW. Ever since he debuted on that brand, I've been watching him forever. And the fact that everybody said that, oh, yeah, you won't get all the fame about the New Day, they just forget he had lengthy title reigns in total. Like, it, yep. it, it was racking up. Oh, yeah, it's he was, um, Isn't he, he was, what, If he was t- the title, would he be Grand Slam champion? Yeah. yeah. He first had a black one. 
on the fact that he had countless reigns with the U.S. Championship. He has countless with the IC Championship. Reason why that during the time he was winning those championships, it was during the time that WWE was passing around those times like hotcakes. And again, it all goes back to what I've been saying, because John Cena dominated ever so much, guys is now coming on top. Now, after years later, after John Cena's not there no more. So, this is not him might be even a family man, but it's just basically watching somebody that's been there for so long finally get his chance at a, like a real chance and at the big main event. Now, this also reminds me of what Tyler Breeze said too a couple of years ago in an interview. He said, Yo, right now, this is not my time. I just gotta wait. And it's all about, it's not sometimes just you have to be, just keep doing what you have to do. And eventually, when that's when it's time for you to call your jury to get out there and score, you go out there and score. In the meantime, no call like he said in an Andrew Christian interview, he was preparing. Mm-hmm. And him fighting a gauntlet match years ago in training help him right now. And now you see, right, and see way. how that all the years, years ago, his training from years ago, now able to do it right now. So this all go back to the bigger picture. And it's for everyone else who's doing their thing out here and listening. Yo, at the end of the day, the little stuff that you think that makes no sense will end up helping you years later. True. And you know what I just thought about as you, as you were talking and, you know, we're going to wrap up very soon. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I'm going to say No, I know, but I was said very soon. I didn't see right now. But I was saying, like, this whole, like, Vince, because when Vince was talking, I was like, oh, this feels a little racist, but I don't know. I don't want to say that. But I was feeling I it, like, that I was like, and I don't know, but I was just like, oh, Vince, this is a little racist. Like, I was dude. waiting for him to say, like, you don't deserve to because you're, you're a black. Yeah, like, I was like, you a It was like that fine line of racism. And he's like, Ugh, I don't know. But then again, but then but, again, you know, it fits the narrative how that, how that, how that, it's actually a genius storyline. No, it is. So that, but it's it's genius in a sense where it they make made it right with Booker emotion T. to me. They make it make it right with what they did to Booker T years ago. Lord. It's only right. But what, you, why do you keep defending Triple H on that me, shit, son? Because y'all act like Booker T didn't have a, a, an amazing career. We're not saying they never had an amazing career though, but that was his, yeah. But he said like, he still had that moment. And think about it, a on. WCW guy being the second world champion. Come on, guys. It would make sense. Was it his time? Shut up. I'm just saying. Shut up. But no, I'm defending that but shit. the whole Kofi thing, that? it low key reminds me of Austin. Like, if we're really actually going to give Austin a, real, a good comp, like comparison, it reminds me of when Vince did everything to block Austin off of the title. No. And then, literally, once again, this is my opinion. And then, once again, the same thing with Kofi, where now you're putting literally every person against him in a gauntlet again to, like, if you win the gauntlet. You're gonna win the title. Like you're gonna be in the title match. He did the same thing to Austin too. So just gonna I just later. love the fact that, and I go like, I know it's Kofi's time that they're working that, but I love the fact that all of New Day is involved in the storyline. They're not getting. Forgotten. They're still getting that work, and it's also showing the value of them to the company. Like, I like. I hate when people are like, oh, they're fucking coons, they're dancing around, stupid thing. I was like, yo, bro, what they bring to the company... It's a lot. It's a lot. And the fact that they're... It's literally Kofi and his supporting cast in the storyline. That's Kofi, amazing. Because Kofi and they said Oh, that. shoot. Crazy thing about that. If you want to go back to that Source interview, check that out. Check out Source interview on SoundCloud and iTunes, wherever you join podcasts at. Um... The New Day are the Migos because them three together are dynamic, but each of them individually have their own set of skills that make them stand out from the, from the pack. Because okay. that Offset album is Yo, fire. Yo, that Offset album is I hot. I to it, though. Actually, that you shit... Because no, no bullshit, that Klaus song, I was like, oh, that shit is hard. And, 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 and like, the New Day is the Monday is the dirty version of the, um, of the Migos. So, the reason why they're so hot because they are, like, universally... Are universally could fit any any group. For example, there's wrestling fans that who are anime fans. There's wrestling fans who like video games. There's, there's wrestling fans that who are into ventures gaming. There's wrestling fans that are into just other sports. There's wrestling fans that are into like different kind of movies. And a new day, it's all of that. Because I know countless guys that who was just mad cop diesel used to be in the um, used to be in the gym. He teach me how to work out all of that. But yet, 
They're like the biggest nerds. They're into Hello Kitty mm-hmm. and like they're into like My Little Pony. Like I know dudes real life yeah, like my nigga they're into Hello, Hello Kitty and My Little Pony. I didn't want to question that. Yeah, there's a lot of questions. Like, if you go to a network or Corey Gray's Culture Shock, you talk about the alignment of a My Little Pony convention. Cal was into that too. All right. All right. So I need you. Cock diesel. Cock diesel niggas out here like Hello Kitty. You know what? I enjoy Sailor Moon. So, so that's different. That's 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 very different. So, Kofi represents that tall, linky dude in school where, like, he's just super cool and mad. Like, yeah, everyone likes him because he's Kofi. Yeah, that's Kofi. I know who he is. He's cool. Boom. Xavier is the type where, like, how that he might be oldie nerdy. But this thing will get to get the bag, get into computers, all of that. Everybody represents something that um, is what every... It represents America right now. All right, no all right. problem. So, last words on SmackDown. What else did you think real quick? SmackDown once again did the thing. All right. All right, so it has been fun, guys, that I'm watching. Sorry that if on the Instagram Live we weren't there, but you can catch this episode on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, Jobber Taste Podcast. As always, you can become a fellow jobber by following us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that jazz. Um, once again, WrestleMania week, we have a lot of things going on. We have our brunch and game on the 30th. We have... Um, our NXT viewing party and we are topping off with WrestleMania featuring Al Snow. Um, as always, I know Janelle from HR here with Sir Wilkins and Mr. Black. Hashtag has- Black Excellence, hashtag Rao. It's the Jobbers Tears Podcast. <laughs>